What's going on? Listen to look at me, you'd think I'm not right in the head. But the reasons for my condition are far more awful than mere madness. William, what I've discovered goes beyond understanding. You just have to believe me, we're all in the gravest danger. That's why I keep on looking, but the more I learn, the more this thing devours me. I've been sentenced to death, William. For our friendship's sake, I ask you to look after this. Don't speak of it to anyone, don't give it to anyone, not even to me. Especially if I ask for it. Mr. William Stanton, I presume. Allow me to introduce myself. Dr. Robert Eagleton, physician and friend of Sir Christopher Witcherly. I would like to talk to you about his son, Edgar Witcherly, who, if I'm not mistaken, is a friend of yours. I know Edgar too well not to notice the signs of insane delirium. It's a unique case. The terror he's experiencing cannot be easily dismissed. Are you aware of the rumors circulating about Dr. Owens in Port Taxid Village? I fear greatly for your friend. Uh, so do his parents, and some of my psychiatric colleagues are talking of internment. You see, I would greatly value your considered opinion. Please, would you pay him a visit? Uh, yes, of course I will. Thank you, William. Here's my telephone number. Contact me as soon as you run into him again. Goodbye, young fellow. Thank you again for your help. Whatever the young man's looking for, he should ask Ma Brady. Um, I'm looking for Edgar Witcherly's residence. Do you know it? For a few coins, kind soul.
Go see Mr. Crumb at the grocery store. You can't miss it. Crumb and Son, at your service. I'm looking for Edgar Witcherly's house. Do you know it? Mr. Witcherly, you say? Ah, uh, no. I'd have to... Will you be needing anything else, sir? Edgar Witcherly, for the love of God. I'm only a simple grocer, sir, trying to make a living. Thank you. What you need, sir, is a map. Then I can show it to you. This one costs twenty dollars, sir. Here you are, sir. I've marked the address you wanted with a cross. That's forty dollars altogether. Thank you, and look after yourself, sir. Yes, Mr. Witchery has gone out. Mr. William Stanton, take a seat. I'm delighted to see you. Did you see my son in his new place in Portoxit? Um, well, actually, no. You used to be inseparable once. How I wish he hadn't abandoned his archaeology studies. How about you, William? Do you flit from one new passion to another? Uh, no, sir. I've just finished my architecture studies. First archaeology, then genealogy, then foreign travel, astronomy, and chemistry. Personally, I preferred his archaeology period. Perhaps because he used to speak of it with passion. But then it seems children become more reserved, more secretive with their parents. Can I offer you a soda? Yes, I'd like that, thank you. Edgar left many books and documents here relating to his recent research work. This is Gregor Herschel who was a wealthy Providence shipowner in the colonial era. He had a daughter, who was Mrs. Wycherley's great-grandmother. This portrait was painted by Cosmo Alexander in 1765. Unlike my wife, Edgar loves this painting. It's a shame that he's not here to tell you all about it. Tell me honestly, don't you find the resemblance absolutely uncanny? I had hoped that you might bring some news of my son. I suspect that this chemist, Dr. Owens, is working him too hard. Dr. Eggleton tells me that his health has deteriorated over the last few months. Come back and see me whenever you want, William. Edgar hardly ever writes to us these days, so it's a real pleasure to chat with you about him. Crumb and Son, at your service. Hello, my friend. 
Does the name Gregor Herschel mean anything to you? How about that? Yes, yes. Yes, but it's cheap at half the price. I have to make a living too, sir. A ship owner? See if he's known down at the harbor, sir. Cross the church square and keep going down. Best that sleeping dogs lie. By Christ, this business has the smell of sacrilege about it. Pardon? Good day, sir. I was told that I might be able to get information here about a fellow named Gregor Herschel. Gregor Herschel? Sounds familiar. Oh, yes. I remember now. He was a big shot and a traitor. Yes, yes. He was in cahoots with all the Providence big wigs. He had a dock and good business. I would have thought there would be articles about him in the Providence Gazette, for he caused quite a commotion in his day. Good day, sir. Excuse me for interrupting your work, but do you have any articles in your archives about a fellow named Gregor Herschel? It's surprising to see how Herschel still provokes a lot of interest today, but tread warily, for his is a tale of madmen. The last person to ask about him was Edgar Wycherley, an archaeologist. Gregor Herschel is a strange character from our town's past. He came here from Salem, where he had moved to from Oregon around 1713. He bought landing stages near Mile End Bay and made a fortune from the slave trade. In 30 years, he became the richest ship owner in the town, controlled a large slice of Providence's commerce, rubbed shoulders with high society, and got married to the daughter of one of its captains in 1767. He died in a fire at his farmhouse in April 1771, featured regularly in the paper from 1713 to 1771. Happy hunting, Mr. William Stanton. So then, young man, how's your research on Gregor Herschel going? Well, I've been doing a bit of my own research, and I've discovered that he traveled widely in his younger days, that he stayed in England and made two separate trips to the East. But for some strange reason, he shunned the company of men. Although he never turned away a guest, very few folk were able to find a word to say to him. 
Have a word with Blackfish. He'll tell you all about it. He lives in that small house down there.